All right, so it's time to talk iOS 18.5 beta one and how it's been operating for the last couple of days since we've been running it. Obviously everyone wants to know about battery life and performance. We are gonna talk about some of the changes again that we didn't discuss in our prior video and how all of these items have been holding up, especially after how bad iOS 18.4's public release went. We'll talk about all that in this video. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's start out by talking about some of those other changes that we did not discuss in our prior video. And the first one is going to be some mail changes where you can now turn on and off contact photos on the left hand side of each line item. This again is really nothing new. You could have always done this in the settings app under mail, but now it's more convenient and you have that little toggle right here that says show contact photos that you can simply toggle on and off like we said. Not a lot of companies currently utilize this. As you can see, YouTube has a little star icon and there are some other uh, companies that actually have been utilizing it like Amazon. But aside from that, there have not been a lot to currently implement this. So nice little change. Again, one of those small quality of life improvements simply from the mail app in the drop down if you want to keep that active or not. And while you're updating your iPhone, Make sure to take a quick look at today's sponsor, Magback. They have some of the best case offerings out there and have been around for a long time. They are really pushing and have some sales going on for their elite case that are super customizable, as you can see here, with a ton of different color options available in black and red and other ones as well on their website. If you don't want to customize it and you want a seamless case that has some great protection, with magnets included, as you can see here, you can always go for their classic offering as well. Use that affiliate link up down below and the promo code PAD15 for 15% off of your purchase. Again, this is possibly one of the best offerings and one of the most best cases for an all-in-one solution with a thumb loop, a kickstand, and a nice little pinky pillow, as they call it at the bottom. Thanks to Magback for sponsoring today's video. And talking about settings also, one of the other changes, if you scroll down to actual general and Apple Care and warranty, this now has a new banner. If it wants to load, it looks a little different right here and shows your eligibility for all your devices. Uh, and if it's eligible to add or if it has limited warranty or if coverage has expired, this just looks a little bit different. And you can obviously go into each individual item to get more details regarding all this. Uh, again, more of just a small, quick UI tweak, but it is a change nonetheless. The back tap banner is actually back now. So if you double tap the back of your phone, you can see that is there again where it was missing from the last RC. It is there, it still looks like junk quite honestly, but you can turn that on and off. And then in control center as well here now, there was a change to the cellular toggle when it is standalone. It is not accurately showing what your service is. You can actually see the difference, it's pretty funny here. This cellular tile does show you your correct accurate service where you see we're missing one bar. Again, you can see we're missing one bar here, but in the actual single icon, it is showing that it is fully strength. As far as performance has been going, it has been pretty good. I got to say it hasn't been terrible. If you jump around, let's just go to stocks like we always do and kind of scroll down, go to an article. Uh, it's been working as you would anticipate. Nothing too crazy here. We have experienced one issue though, where intermittently the screen would freeze and it would just not work. You'd have to keep tapping it to get whatever you want to actually take your action. So not ideal there. It has been intermittent though. We've only experienced it a couple of times. So let me know in the comments down below if you're using this beta, if you've experienced that same issue. The performance is on par, like I said, with other prior builds, maybe a little worse than 18.4, which isn't that reassuring considering how bad 18.4's issue is. But aside from that, it is okay. And then also on here, jumping into battery, and battery health, you can see now we're almost at 200 cycle counts and we're still at maximum capacity after running, I don't even know how many betas since this has been released at this point. So definitely, definitely good to see here. Now, aside from that, I do want to say battery life is a little worse than 18.4, again, to be expected, but it is still maintaining it pretty well. 
So let me know also how much your cycle counts are in the comments down below and what your maximum capacity is to see if that does correlate to people running the betas or if we just happen to luck out and still have great capacity on this or if Apple might have fixed the actual issue. Aside from that, no other real issues here have been discovered. It's been working very well, very fluently. Um, so again, betas, beta one for Apple devices have been historically decent and somehow between betas two and three, it always goes down and makes it worse. Aside from that, we should be getting the next beta in a few weeks. Usually between beta one and beta two, there is a two week gap. Since this was oddly released on a Wednesday, I wouldn't expect the update to come for beta two on the 7th, but the week of the 14th, most likely the 14th or 15th and 14th, 14th seems to be most likely since Apple has been dropping these betas on Monday. As far as the next one goes, we should receive beta three on the 24th, 21st, four on the 28th, and then sometime in May, the RC with the last betas being released probably towards the end of that month. And then in June, we can expect iOS 19 that we've already done a video on since WWDC is starting on the week of the 9th. And we have good news. We will actually be going. We did get invited to WWDC 25 this year. So make sure to subscribe to get all of that content that will be coming with it. So that's really it for this video, guys. Not too much else. Again, if you're wanting to update, I do think it might be a little more stable than 18.4. I would also expect an 18.4.1 to be released here in the near future, just because of all of those bugs as well. So let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, how are you feeling about iOS as a whole? You guys blew up the comments on the 18.4 issue video. Clearly we weren't the only ones experiencing it. So yeah, let us know if you're ready to take the jump to 18.5. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.